Hey everyone, this is Chris from Grimsby in the UK. You're watching Truck Josh Vlogs. Enjoy. Good morning folks from the bumpy highways here in North Dakota. This is surprising. North Dakota usually has very, very fine interstates. This is Interstate 94. We just went through Fargo. Getting a little later start than I wanted to today. Uh, it's because I was waiting at the shop for four hours this morning. It was busy there. I wanted to get my uh, uh, truck greased and also get my fuel filters changed and the truck looked at just because we went through some cold weather and I uh, didn't have any fuel filters on me so I figured well let's just bring it in the shop thaw it out a little bit so that they can get my fuel filters changed check everything on my truck grease it and now we're good to go again but I had to wait a little while because so many people froze up overnight so many drivers still not using anti-gel in their fuel when it gets cold I made one friend in there, he was uh, a Mexican guy who grew up in Texas. Uh, so I guess that'd make him an American guy. But he was born in Mexico. And uh, he served time in the US military and he was deployed to Iraq and Afghanistan. And he was telling me stories of, he was there for Operation Shock and Awe. And he was telling me stories about, uh, you know, the mortars flying around and things blowing up all around him. It's a very interesting guy. Now he's a truck driver and uh, he had just bought a truck similar to mine, it was a Volvo. And uh, he's from further south, so I guess the truck was probably from further south. And uh, he had a lot of water built up inside his air tanks and his air system. Yeah, Cause it's probably, you know, years of condensation building up when it gets colder. Thank you, I'll, I will bypass the scale, thank you very much. And then anyways, he, his air his air froze up on his truck and then his bypass valves, they all froze up. And so he needed to be thawed out in the shop there and so we got to talk and what an interesting guy. Loves his country. And loves trucking. So we will be in Canada in about six hours. We're not taking it easy today, we're just giving her because we spent a lot of time there waiting. But we're still on schedule. Just not as much spare time now. I just wanted to share this uh, scenery with you once again. I always love sharing the scenery of Eastern North Dakota and Southern Manitoba with you whenever we're here, which is all the time. 
Notice the power lines across the road. Amazing. We got some oversized grain bins off to the left. Holding grain. Fantastic. You got some grass over there. Authentic North Dakota grass. Amazing. We're losing our four lane here, going down to a two lane. Would have never guessed. Someone didn't get their corn harvested. So we have some frozen corn. That's pretty exciting. Welcome to North Dakota. If you think this is the top of the world, <laughs> wrong. My whole country is on, on top of this yet. And there's more land area up there than there is in all the United States. So more land up there than there is down here. A long way to go yet. I'm not trying to brag or anything. I'm just saying this isn't the end of the world, believe me. It feels like it in wintertime. Oak trees, exquisite. You guys enjoying this or what? This is North Dakota. Plan your next vacation in North Dakota. Riveting scenery. Life changing. This is the place to be. Got a real North Dakota farm right over there to the left, to the right. That's the, that's the right. I don't know which way is which. To the right. There's also one over there to the left. Two real North Dakota farms. Don't you wish you were here? I know you wish you were here. I know I'm making you jealous right now. That's why I'm showing you this. But you know, if you look off to the right, there's a slight rise. Some might classify it as a hill. Get out your toboggans. Carrington, where everyone cares so much about you. Carrington, North Dakota. Looks a lot different now than it did when we were here in summertime, eh? We went for a walk down the street when the weather was still nice, the grass was green. Coming up to our buddy here on the right. Our buddy who's waving in ways that I'm not allowed to. Pay attention to the right side of the road. Right by the Chieftain Motel up there. Diesel, you watching? You gonna wave back? You can do it, Diesel, I can't. I do it, I get in big trouble. They'll kick me off the YouTubes. Here he comes. You looking, Diesel? There he is. How? Oh. I think that's how they used to say hello. Nowadays, that gesture means something very different. At the roundabout, take the third exit of one kilometer. Look at all these beautiful Chevys. Diesel, look at the Chevys. Look at the Chevys. Wow. So I've decided I'm probably just going to buy out my truck. I mean, I keep going back and forth uh, between getting a new truck and buying one out next year. So like a year from now when my lease is up, I'll probably just buy it out. I don't want more debt, but we'll see. That changes every month. But if I did get a new truck, I've decided which one to get. Karen, this is important. I don't care about your roundabouts, Karen. This is important. New trucks. If I were to get a new truck, it would be a, uh, a Chevrolet Silverado Trail Boss with a standard bed, blacked out, black bow tie on the front, complete midnight package, black rims and everything. A Trail Boss that comes with what? A two inch factory lift and leveling kit? Uh huh. Z24. The whole package, heated seats, sunroof, and everything. At the roundabout, take the third exit. You know, when they first released these uh, new Silverados, I hated them. I even told you guys how much I hated them. They like, sort of grew on me. I'd buy one. But I don't really want to. I like my truck, because the truck I have now, the pickup I have now, is sort of like 
it's it's a lot more square. This road for 21 kilometers. It's a lot more square, and I really think that these trucks are going to be like the new box trucks. You know, like the old uh, 80s and 90s Chevy Silverados. So I'm like, you know, I'm going to go this way. I'm going to go this way. My bad. Don't mind me. Here's the Canadian. Doesn't know where he's going. So I'll probably buy mine out, put exhaust on it. Uh, you know, give it a four inch lift and level, leveling kit. Get some Wrangler tires on there. It'll be good. It, it, the pickup does everything I need it to do, right? I would like to have the 6.2 liter engine. Man, whatever. I need a new semi truck before I need a new pickup, in all honesty. Because this truck is what? Eh, this truck could maybe last another five years. I could rebuild it and then make it last 10, maybe, but. Eventually, I'm gonna need a new semi truck, and that's a lot more expensive and a little bit more important because those trucks make money for you. Pickup trucks only cost money for you. What's going on, you handsome man? You stud? You're looking at yourself in the mirror there? Oh, you're looking at that guy over there. That guy looks like he's going for a sleepover at the motel, man. I think you're right. I think he's gonna go and hang out in that motel. What is that over there? Cobblestone Inn and Suites? Never stayed there before. Looks very nice. It does, doesn't it? I like it when they have motels right next to uh, right next to truck stops. That way you can park your truck somewhere overnight and just walk over to the motel if you want to. I like staying in motels every now and then. I used to do it more often, but uh, Every now and then, it's sort of like a little treat on the road, right? You got a TV, you got to stretch out, you got a big bed. It's a clean room, and when you leave, you don't have to clean it. It's fantastic. Right, Diesel? I bet you that dude would make a very good friend. Diesel, you just want to be friends with everybody. Everybody's my friend, man. Everybody. One of the good things about North Dakota you'll get awesome sunsets as the sun goes behind the horizon. It's something that, uh, you know, I've heard people in the mountains say they've never seen anything like it. They call it the prairie sky. Because for them, the sun disappears behind the mountains early on in the evening already, right? Here you get to see it drop right below the flat horizon. We got a pretty strong wind coming out of the south here. We're headed west. You can see the sun setting just over there. Straight west. And the wind is coming from the south and it's a strong one. And you know what that means, right? If you've been paying attention to my videos, you know what that means. That means warm weather is on the way. By the time we get up to Fort McMurray, it should only be about minus three. That's just three degrees below the freezing point in Celsius. So thank you, America. We were getting kind of cold up here. Thanks for blowing up this warm air for us. Really appreciate it. I got all the beautiful warm air on the way up to Canada. I gotta turn right in 10 kilometers or like seven, eight miles. And then this wind will be pushing me all the way back up to Canada. Frontage road and then turn left in 30 meters. Well, the sun has once again left us and gone to visit the other side of the world. And we are here in Minot, North Dakota, and why not get some fuel while we're here? They sell diesel number one here, which not every truck stop in the US sells diesel number one. This is one of the very few that I know of. I know a lot more probably do, but Pilot Flying J, this is the only Pilot Flying J I know of that sells diesel number one, which is conditioned for winter weather. It's got additives added into it already. Right. Doesn't mean it's never gonna gel up. You should still use additives if it gets down to minus 30. But it's a lot better than the regular diesel, which is called diesel number two. Pull around here, find an empty, empty 
empty slot for myself. Here we go. Here we go, right here. I choose this one. Oh, we don't get any roof over us here. I guess we will fuel beneath the stars. That is okay. Diesel number one, that's this first one here. All right. I don't mess around in wintertime. When it gets cold, I don't mess around. Some people are like, oh, you don't need to put in conditioner all the time. You don't need to do this. You don't need to do that. Those are the same people that tell me I don't need to do a tug test every morning to make sure my trailer won't fall off, but I'm gonna do it anyways because I don't mess around. It's cold. And I don't want my trailer to fall off either. I just don't mess around with those kind of things. There's, there's certain things that I don't mess with. Winter is one of them. And my trailer is the other one. Rolling into the megatropolis of Regina, Saskatchewan. Look at these big buildings that got built here. These are all brand new. I don't remember these. Wow. Very nice, Regina. Very nice. Those are like four stories tall. <whistles> Careful now. Don't hurt yourself. We're uh, looking for parking. I've got how much time left on here? We have four hours and 21 minutes of remaining drive time. So we got a ways that we could go yet, but it's past midnight. It's 20 minutes past midnight, and I want to stop and read my book before I get too tired. I want to get through at least like a chapter without falling asleep. That'd be great. Maybe I can get through two. Usually I read one chapter and I'm done. I'm just out. That's my way of falling asleep. But uh, we're going to go to the Husky up here. I just passed the bypass. Like we're coming in here from the south on what is this? Uh, 33? Yeah, we're on Highway 33. Is the Regina Bypass open now? I saw trucks driving on it and the closed signs were gone, so I'm assuming it's open now? I thought I saw, you know, I saw some comments from some of you in my comment section once asking about the bypass. I actually haven't driven on it yet. I didn't know it was open. I guess next time I head out to Calgary or Swift Current from Winnipeg, I can try out the new Regina Bypass. Actually, it was pretty impressive they, how fast they got that done. It only took, what, two years? Two, maybe three years? Man, if that bypass was being built in Winnipeg, it would have taken them like 20 or 30 years. I'm not even joking. Ask anyone from Winnipeg. They'd agree with me. And they would have done it wrong. There would have been train tracks that you got to stop for. There wouldn't have been any overpasses. There would have been traffic lights. Definitely traffic lights. And if there was any overpass, it'd be all messed up. Like the corner of... Uh, you know, the 52, not the 52, the, the 59 and the south perimeter. Like when you're when you're coming down the south perimeter from Deacon's Corner, right, for my locals. And you want to turn south onto the 59 off the westbound south perimeter of Winnipeg. You know how that intersection is all messed up? You want to turn south, so you got to like go up to the top of the hill and you have this blind corner where you got to try to get across with a 75 foot unit that takes forever to get moving and cars are coming flying through there at 100 kilometers an hour and you're expected to not like cut anyone off and clothesline anyone with your trailer yeah that's a winnipeg intersection one of these days i'll have to show all you uh international people and like people who have, don't know what i'm talking about that intersection it's ridiculous it's a typical winnipeg intersection makes no sense and it's dangerous But yeah, Regina, you got your bypass done in just a couple of years. That is hashtag impressive. Good job. I can't wait to try it out. Give my review on it. I won't take it easy on you. I hope you did a good job. This Husky truck stop we're going to to see if there's any parking is an old truck stop that was built within the city limits of Regina. And I'm thinking now that they have a bypass that bypasses the city that there won't be as much truck traffic within the city limits. So I'm kind of hoping that there's gonna be a parking spot for us there. Because all the trucks would have gone around the city, right? I mean, I can already tell now there's less truck traffic on this road, unless if it's, that could also be because it's, you know, 1230 in the morning. I don't even know if that bypass is open, but I'm assuming it is. 
I don't know. I won't know until I see your comments because I'm not going to go check it out tonight. And tomorrow morning we're heading straight north up to Fort McMurray. It's a full day's drive from here yet. We still have 1,100 kilometers or like uh, 700, 750 miles to do tomorrow yet. And since we're in Canada, we'll have 13 hours to do it in, so it'll be tight. It'll be tight. Here she be. Oh, it looks full. Of course it's full. Of course. Why would there be a... Even my special parking spot is taken. How dare you? This freight liner right here, you'll see just on our left as I pull in, that's my secret spot. I know it's right out in the open, right? It's like hidden in plain sight, but you can park there and you're out of the way. And he's taking it. The big flag is at half staff too. What tragedy are we mourning? Why is the flag at half staff? Weird. Well, I'm gonna see if I can find a parking spot here and if not, I'll have to continue down the road. Uh, either way, I'll talk to you at the end of my day. I'm gonna see if I can find somewhere to park. It's always a little bit of a task, even up here. We made a spot at the old Flying J card lock. I'll take it. Good enough for me. So thanks for joining us today, everybody. I hope to see you tomorrow. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't. <coughs> I'm alive. What was that? Cut me off mid-sentence. But you know what I was gonna say, right? Don't forget to subscribe. Hit the like button, it helps me out a lot. And leave me a comment down below, even if you don't usually leave comments. Let me know you're there. See you tomorrow. Tomorrow we'll get to Fort McMurray, at least. We should.